The topic of today's video is rather disturbing, so as a result, we're not able to show any images of the injuries of white phosphorus. But if you do want to see what white phosphorus can do to the human body, it is widely available on Google Images. Thank you. There are a few weapons that can cause as much fear as white phosphorus. To understand that the flames produced cannot be properly extinguished, to know that contact with white phosphorus will burn to a person's bone, and to realise it is still used by militaries around the world is truly disturbing. In today's video, we will look at the discovery of white phosphorus, the harm caused in its civilian use, and the devastating impact in its use as a weapon. It is perhaps helpful to start with a description as to what white phosphorus is. White phosphorus is a waxy solid substance that has had many uses throughout its history. It is either a yellowy or colourous material with a smell similar to garlic. It is capable of igniting with immediate contact with the air. Once ignited, white phosphorus will continue to burn until there is no more oxygen for it to consume, or the white phosphorus has been depleted. It can burn as hot as 1300 degrees Celsius and is very soluble in body fat. This means that white phosphorus can burn through the skin, tissues and muscle, all the way down to the bone. Burns covering as little as 10% of the body can be fatal. Even if the flame can be put out, there is a danger that fragments of white phosphorus can remain in the body and later spontaneously combust presenting a real danger to those treating the wounds inflicted. The smoke created is very dense, making it useful for smoke screens, but it is also an irritant. It can cause damage to the lungs and eyes, and if consumed, it can cause damage to the heart, liver and kidneys. As with many discoveries, white phosphorus was discovered entirely by accident. In 1669, German alchemist Hennig Bronto was attempting to create the Philosopher's Stone, which was supposed to hold the power to transform metals into gold. He attempted this by boiling his urine down to a paste before heating this material through water, resulting in a waxy substance forming. What formed was white phosphorus. This recipe was sold by Branta and further expanded upon using other materials to create white phosphorus. Bone ash, burdened bat guano and phosphate rock have since been used to create white phosphorus. One of the more infamous uses of white phosphorus was in match heads. It was discovered that white phosphorus allowed the matches to ignite easier, with phosphorus matches developed in the 19th century. These matches were prone to accidentally ignite. They were also placed in brandy, allowing the phosphorus to create an abortion drink for women or an aphrodisiac for men, though more often than not, this would result in the death of the consumer. It also didn't take long for occupational disease to be noted amongst those working at the match factories. Austrian doctor Friedrich Wilhelm Lorenzer identified around 22 women who had what he described as phosphorus necrosis, otherwise known as fossy jaw. The symptoms of this disease will begin with severe pain in the teeth and gums. This will lead to inflammation of the gums and teeth will start to fall out, whilst the bone in the jaw begins to rot away. The lower jaw will begin to fall away, leaving the person without a functional jaw. Many would die from infections that took roots in the cavities created in the jaw bones. These match girls fought their employees for better working conditions and would swap the use of the dangerous white phosphorus in favour of safer red phosphorus. It wouldn't be until 1910 that the use of white phosphorus was banned in Europe for the manufacture of matches. This however would not see the end of white phosphorus in common household objects. Rhodine, a form of rat poison, used white phosphorus. The body's liver will try to remove the phosphorus, ultimately failing and leading to death. This applies to both rats and humans with some reported cases of murders committed by white phosphorus rat poison. One infamous example is that of Sarah Ricketts. Mrs Ricketts had hired Louisa Merrifield as a housekeeper. Ricketts divulged that she planned to, or was otherwise convinced, to leave Merrifield her entire estate in her will, resulting in their housekeeper speeding up that process. Merrifield would slip Rodine into Ricketts' room and jam, leading to her death. 
It wouldn't be until 1963 that the Animals' Cruel Poisons regulations were brought into force, resulting in the use of white phosphorus being banned. The reasoning appears to be not only that the poison posed a significant risk to other animals, but that the method was unnecessarily cruel. The use of white phosphorus in weaponry, however, remains alive and well. It first saw military use during the First World War. White phosphorus as a smoke grenade provided great smokescreen, whilst also irritating the lungs and eyes of the enemy. These grenades were first developed by the British, earning the nicknames Willy Peets. Mortars, tank and artillery shells were soon developed and saw use in the Second World War. They proved effective as anti-personnel weapons and in clearing out entrenched positions. Grenades thrown into bunkers would suffocate those within and burn those exposed. It was used to create fires within urban and forest locations. During the Vietnam War, white phosphorus was used against the Viet Cong tunnel networks and those dwelling within. The burning of white phosphorus would consume the oxygen within the tunnels, suffocating those within. In more recent times, white phosphorus saw use during the 2004 invasion of Iraq. It was infamously used in the city of Fallujah by American forces, both as a smokescreen and as an illumination device. During the Syrian civil war, Russian, American and Turkish forces all deployed white phosphorus. During the 2008 Gaza war, Israeli forces deployed white phosphorus. In all of these instances, denials were commonplace as to its use. One might think that the use of incendiary weapons should be banned by the protocol and prohibitions of restrictions on the use of incendiary weapons. This was a United Nations treaty that came into force in 1983, well before the examples previously given. Protocol 3, however, defines incendiary weapon devices as devices primarily designed to set fire to objects or to cause burn injuries to a person. White phosphorus has an incendiary effect, and yet when deployed as a smokescreen, it is argued that any anti-personnel or incendiary effect was never intended. This can give users of white phosphorus plausible deniability. In Fallujah, American forces later admitted to using white phosphorus to smoke out hidden insurgents before killing them with conventional artillery, despite claims that it was only used in the permitted fashion. This is made ever more apparent when such weapons have been used in densely populated civilian areas. Human Rights Watch documented examples of white phosphorus used in Gaza in 2009 in civilian areas. The Israeli forces' use of white phosphorus was described by Human Rights Watch as indiscriminate. Human Rights Watch also found no evidence of white phosphorus used directly against military targets. One survivor to white phosphorus was Saba Alu Halima. She was admitted to hospital with deep burns all the way down to the bone. Five members of her family were killed by white phosphorus, including her husband, her three young sons, and her 15-month-old daughter. Those who survived later recalled how their family members' clothes and skin melted away. This is but one example of the disturbing damage that white phosphorus can cause. Article 2 does prohibit the use of using incendiary weapons where civilians are the object of the attack as well as military objectives within civilian concentrations by air-delivered incendiary weapons. White phosphorus remains an exception due to the intention of such bombs being argued to have other purposes. Those who deploy such white phosphorus argue that any incendiary effects were not intended, with its primary use being a smokescreen. Despite being banned as an unnecessarily cruel rat poison, white phosphorus remains in the arsenal of many countries' militaries to this day. The damage it has inflicted, and will no doubt continue to inflict, is unbelievably horrifying, and will cement white phosphorus as one of the more disturbing weapons. If you want to see for yourself the true horrors of the use of white phosphorus, there are many images on Google available to see, but I do warn you, they are incredibly disturbing.